Well, if you're like me, you probably still have an old Commodore 64 lying around. Well, it sure is a great computer, but I don't want mine to get broken due to uh, faulty power supplies, because they'll break after a short period of time. Now, there's only one thing you can do. Replace the power supply, but I don't, don't want to buy a real one from Commodore, so I built mine myself. The cables here are missing because I've already did the mod. I created a completely new power supply, and I'm also going to show you the part that causes the Commodore 64 to break down. So now I'm going to open the power supply up and show you everything. Okay, below this capacitor there is a 5 volt regulator. Now you just could uh, change that, right? Well, the bad thing is it's covered in epoxy, as you can see. So the only way to replace a 5 volt regulator is to tear the entire thing apart, which I did. I rebuilt the entire power supply, which I do highly recommend doing which I'm going to show you right now and how it works. Now the Comoro needs a 5 volt DC input and a 9 volt AC input. So you need two transformers. You could just use the big one in there, but again, it's really hard to get it back out. So what I did is I created everything completely new so that nothing will get broken and the Commodore will continue living on. So this is my power supply, which I built for the Commodore. It has a Commodore logo on the top, so I know which one it is, because I've built multiple ones. And yeah, on the back I've put the schematics, it has a 9V and a 5V, AC and DC, and even a pin out, because I recommend doing that while you're doing the mod, so nothing will go wrong. Or if I have got to open that thing later on, maybe. So, now I'm going to show you how everything works. If you use a case similar to mine, it will be a little tricky opening it back up again but yeah and if we look inside we can see all the components the 220 volts plug-in down there and in the 5 volt transformer well this is a 5 volt transformer which produces DC and can support up to 3 amps well it will never reach 3 amps because I've installed uh, fuses as you can see, the white things right here. And above that, we can see the big blue 9 volt AC transformer. The 220 volts plug in down there, and I get 9 volts out of here. Okay. Oh, yeah, and I used the original cables of the original power supply. Here we have the schematics I did. I've pointed out which cables are what, the 9 volt AC and the 5 volt DC, so that I will do in the end everything correctly, as you see here. So I better close up from the image which I did with the 9 volt and the 5 volt and their specific colors. Okay, here I have the Commodore, which I've now hooked up to my Mac. Right now it says no signal, okay, true, because I still haven't connected the power supply which I am going to do right now. Here you can see me plugging in the power supply into the 220 volts input. And this is the original plug that we used, which I'm now going to plug into the Commodore, as you can see now. Fits. Okay, I'm going to zoom into onto the LED while I switch the thing on. Okay, now it's on, you can see it glowing pretty weak, but that's because of a lot of light around, and we have signal. Now this is real, I'm not using any emulators or other programs, this is done by using my rebuild power supply. To finish it off, let's play a game. I'll just get something. Okay, as you can see I'm using this, this is the SD2 IEC. It allows you to download ROMs, put them on your SD card, and use them on the Commodore. Because I don't like emulators, With if I download ROMs, I want to use them on the real console, which, as you can see, I'm doing right now. Now, the SD2 IEC allows you to play the ROMs on the Commodore 64. As you can see, I'm hooking it up right now, and I will show you that it's working. Okay, 
going to type load. The program or the file manager which I have on there is called FB for file browser, comma H just to tell it where it is. So it's now loading. And type right, yeah, return. And now it will take a second or two. Okay, scroll down to C64. Really, I am using the real Commodore. This is not a virtual machine. And yeah, which game? How about um, Suicide Express? Why not? Hi. <laughs> yeah. So it does take some time to load. Okay. Just gonna find Suicide Express. I really like that game. Although I, yeah, I'm not pretty good on it. Okay, found it. And while that's loading, I'm going to show you what the multimeters are showing on the power supply. You can see, well, it's pretty hard to see. This one is showing me 5 volts. I don't know why the camera won't adjust. Okay, now. And this is at 700 or 800 milliamps. So everything is still okay. So proof this is uh, working. And anybody uh, can blow it himself. You just need a 5 volt transformer. DC, well you can use anyone just like I did, I just used a real plug and just solder the cables onto it and a 9 volt AC transformer. So yeah, it's pretty easy to find those and solder them in. Just need to find a case that's big enough because the first case I got was too small. As you can see the game is now loading. Yeah. <laughs> So this is proof, this is really working, and yeah. Okay, well, no, no cheats right now, but um, yeah, I too actually pretty suck on this, but I'm going to activate the end sequence. For all those people um, that don't know if this game has an end sequence or they want to find it out, spoiler alert, because I am going to show it here. And I'm dead already, so you can see <laughs> how do I control this? Ah, normally I'm using the joystick, right now I'm using the keyboard, and yeah, the game's over. So, for those wondering if there's an end sequence, well. This is the end sequence. Well, that's it. That's one of my mods I made. I have plenty of others. If you want to like, would like to see more, just tell me in the comments. And I'm gonna show you more stuff. So that's that. This is the Commodore 64 power supply which I built, and as you can see, it's working completely without any problems. Bye. <laughs>